One thing you can count on when Donald Trump feels cornered, there is no limit to how low he will go. And with Nikki Haley closing the gap on the former president in the latest poll out of New Hampshire, trailing him by just seven points, according to new polling, Trump has resorted to an oh-so-familiar and oh-so-disgusting line of attack. NBC News reporting, quote, Trump posted an article on his Truth Social account from a right-wing outlet that claimed Haley, his GOP rival, is ineligible to be president because her parents were not U.S. citizens when she was born. Haley was born in South Carolina and has lived in the U.S. her entire life. Her parents were immigrants who became citizens after her birth in 1972. As we know too well, Haley is not the first victim of Trump's racist birtherism. She is just the latest. Trump has attempted to question the citizenship of former President Barack Obama, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and Vice President Kamala Harris. Or as Nikki Haley herself joked back in 2016, it won't really feel like I made it until Donald Trump demands to see my birth certificate. Joining me at the table, former chairman of the RNC, Michael Steele, and former chief spokesperson for Vice President Kamala Harris, Simone Sanders Townsend, our new MSNBC show, The Weekend, kicks off in just a few days, Saturdays and Sundays at 8 a.m. Yes. Sir, it looks like Nikki Haley's made it. She made it. They like her. They really, really like her. I, you know, it's, it's, but what do you expect at this point? Donald Trump is looking at these numbers. I'm sure his internal pollings are, are confirming that seven point uh, gap. Uh, other polls have the numbers larger, but I think the seven is closer to what's at stake. There are real efforts underway right now in the state of New Hampshire by Republicans to get Chris Christie to get out so they can all rally around uh, uh, Nikki. So Trump sees that writing at least trying to be written on the wall uh, for him to have a real challenge in New Hampshire. So what is his go to? She wasn't born here. She's other. Mm -hmm. She's not one of us. And. That actually will have some resonance with some of Trump's supporters um, who may begin to look at Nikki a little bit differently than they did. Not that they were ever aligned to go and support her outright to begin with because they were with Trump. But what it does is it feeds the echo chamber, it starts the back talking, and then you see these stories popping up on right wing media that will play f further down the line. It just. The irony is so rich, Simone, given that we're currently having a national conversation about Donald Trump's own eligibility. Certainly that has to play in. I mean, truly, the, four, the 14th Amendment, we all know it well at this point. I, I think what the chairman said about the polling is absolutely correct. And oftentimes, in, in my experience, when you get the polling like that and the candidate and campaigns have decided they would like to attack, uh, the kind of attack that you use also really matters. And I don't necessarily know if this is the, 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 right. the thing that Donald Trump should have hung his hat on here, but it's familiar to him, right? Mm -hmm. He said this about Barack Obama. Uh, uh, that literally, it's the thing that helped launch, that Donald Trump mm -hmm. launched his campaign on the back of. He said it about Vice President Kamala Harris. So this is in his playbook. I don't know if it is as effective. Now, to be clear, I say that. I, I'm from Nebraska. There's racism all over this country, um, and it definitely exists in the Midwest and all up there in New England and New Hampshire as well. But I just, I don't, I don't know if this is the thing. It does, though, to me, say that he believes Nikki Haley is a threat. And I think Nikki Haley's campaign welcomes these oh, kind sure. of attacks. Yeah. She has not leaned into her heritage by any means. You know, what, right. what Donald Trump is trying to say is she's a scary brown lady. He is absolutely othering her. And it's not like Nikki Haley has been out there using her, you know, saying I'm Nimrata, right? So it's just, it, it, it is, it is not as though it's something she's viewed as a strength or weakness. I just think it's, it's, she, she thought a long time ago or decided a long time ago that this is who, this, the, that part of her identity, she was not going to lean into or even ignore. She was just not even going to acknowledge it. Right. We're talking about a tactic, though, that is not just ugly and hateful and lazy. It's also really dangerous, right? This is part of what we've seen from Donald Trump. Not politically dangerous. I'm saying it fits into great replacement theory. Yeah. It, pl yeah. It, fi it fits into this general grievance that America is supposed to look a certain way. Mm. And if it doesn't, and that is part if, of your discontent, yeah. then come and sit with me. It feeds the beast that we did not kill in re during Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. It feeds that beast. This Come thing, this thing has been with us since we allowed uh, the the that element that wanted to break away from us because of 
issues, an issue like slavery, because of slavery, and because later on of how the country tried to reconcile itself with the very people that they had enslaved. That line, that through line still exists. So this is just a modern day iteration of that line, of that through line. He's now taking it, it started with Obama for, for sure, questioning, you know, his, his ability to be here, questioning birthright citizenship. I mean, yeah, okay, so her mama and daddy were, were immigrants, but she was born here. <laughs> Right? That, that's a Unless Donald Trump has his way. You know, he doesn't believe like, in birth exactly. rights. That is, exactly. part, of, that is exactly. part of the issue. But I also think it's interesting. We've talked a lot about the birtherism. There's also another piece of this I think has been less reported on, and that is this. In the final days before the Iowa caucuses, Donald Trump is accusing Nikki Haley of being soft on terrorism. He's attacking Haley, in effect, for opposing his 2015 proposal to ban all Muslims from coming to America. There's no mystery about what Trump is doing. He has always distrusted Muslims. He believes correctly that some Republicans share that feeling, and he has no more compunction about using this as a wedge against Haley than he did about using it against Obama. Trump knows that if Haley were to ba fire back at him by pointing out that Trump wanted to ban all Muslims and she didn't, that position would hurt her in the Republican primaries. In a party full of anti-Muslim sentiment, she can't afford to make that point, and so far she hasn't. It says something about the state of the party, that that is where they find themselves. I, I, the state of the party, but I also, I just really think people are making a gross miscalculation. And we've talked about it before, but the fact that these candidates have been unwilling to compete because campaigns Thank are about, a primary is about com on. competition. Talk and it. they've been unwilling to compete because they're scared right. of what they think Donald Trump is going to say about them or the MAGA base. The MAGA base is 30 or 40 percent. Yes, those are people oh. that will vote in a Republican primary, but correct me if I'm wrong, that leaves a about 60, 65% of people that want to hear something else. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. All right. That's are, it right they, there. They're <laughs> cheersing and sticking <laughs> with me.